Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan, and with all the brands we carry, we know full well that trying to pick out the right RV for you, it can be darn confusing. That's why we want to give you some information today. We're going to be looking at the differences and similarities between a Jayco J Flight and its laminated cousin, the Whitehawk. Now at a glance, you're thinking, those two things aren't similar at all. And that's part of the reason I wanted to put this footage together, because the funny thing is, they're far more similar than dissimilar, frankly. So I think to begin, one of the major talking points we need to have between the two of them is the physical construction variances. Because unlike when I've done a comparison of a J-Flight to an SLX, which are identical in construction and physical shell, it's the shell of these two RVs that are variant. Once you get past that, they are very, very similar in what they do. So a J-Flight is the, the technical term for it is a conventionally constructed RV. The more tongue-in-cheek phrase kind of thrown out there most of the time is stick and tin construction. Um, I think stick and tin is often used in a derogatory fashion in home construction. In the RV industry, I just I tend to call a spade a spade, a duck and a duck. I, I don't I don't get too much into that kind of thing. So whatever you want to call it, that's what this one is. It's made with wood studs, uh, plywood, roof, floor decking, things like that. Like you've got a 5 8 plywood roof decking with uh, wood trusses, Jayco's Magnum Truss roof system, which by the way holds more weight than anyone else who builds a trailer like this up there on the roof. And if the roof is stronger, it will hold up a little bit better to torsional stress twisting and flexing going down the road because the roof is actually the last place where stress is expressed. And if you can contain it there, you're gonna prevent it from rattling the whole RV to death, basically. Um, so you've got 16 inch on center roof studs, 16 inch on center wall studs, 12 inch on center floor studs with a 5 8 tongue and groove plywood floor decking. On top of that, Obviously, we have an aluminum skin. It's a 0.024 inch thickness aluminum. Probably means nothing to you, but that's what it is. And it locks together what's called a Mesa crimp. Each piece of aluminum bends around and locks around itself and kind of holds hands with the piece above or below it. And that is actually one of the things that helps improve the exterior rigidity of the skin of one of these things. J flights also run on a traditional I-beam chassis uh, made by Lippert. Now, Jayco does all of their own engineering. They simply have LCI do the actual building for them. They outsource that. It is thicker. It is heavier. It is a great chassis. There's nothing wrong with it. It's less expensive than the chassis under the White Hog, and that's why it's a better fit for the J Flight. It's not that it's a better chassis. It's that it's a better fit for this target market segment in a segment that is not as weight sensitive and that not uh, well and is more cost sensitive, frankly. Now, when we jump over here and we start seeing fiberglass, immediately people go, oh, aluminum. Yes, there's some aluminum in there. But what I don't think people realize is most of the time people ask, is that an aluminum structured camper? And a lot of agencies, a lot of dealerships, a lot of uh, representatives are just gonna go, yup. And I think what a lot of consumers are thinking is that it's just all aluminum everywhere. It has all the aluminum in the structure, but that's not the case most of the time in the RV industry. There are some, there are some cases of that. That won't be the case here. So yes, it has an uh, aluminum framed laminated uh, series of sidewalls. There is some other aluminum in the construction of this. However, like the, the, the front wall is, is aluminum framed out. The roof though, this has the exact same roof material as a J-Flight. It has that 5 8 plywood roofing. It has big, heavy, vaulted roof trusses. Now, a White Hawk ceiling is different. It's vaulted inside and outside instead of being linear inside and vaulted outside like a J-Flight. We'll see that when we go inside of them. But that's the only physical roof construction difference between them. This will have aluminum floor studs instead of wood floor studs like the J-Flight. And frankly, if you boil down the, the construction verbiage that I just gave you of this White Hawk, that applies to Eagle, North Point, Pinnacle, Talon, Seismic. That is how they build big, heavy, expensive, full-time rated like fifth wheels and things like that. So this is built heavy duty for moving and grooving. It's just down into a smaller package that a lot 
smaller vehicles, many of which being half tons can handle here. Whereas when you start getting into Eagles and especially up in the fifth wheels, half tons really probably aren't going to be doing the job. So there's definitely a difference in how they look. I mean, the curb appeal nod, I think most people are going to say, yeah, no, if, if we're talking curb appeal, it's, I'm going to make it rain on Whitehawk all day long. But the construction variances between them will cause them to be several thousand dollars different. Typically, when you go from a conventional method of construction to a laminated method of construction within the same family of RVs, you're pretty much tacking on about $3,000 right off the get-go. It can be plus or minus that, but that's a good barometer for you. Now, Whitehawk runs on a different chassis. You notice that it's not an I-beam. There's only one, there's not a flange here. It's a Z-frame. It is made by a company called Norco. It is a huck-bolted ultralight chassis, very similar in construction method to something like an aircraft, basically. Um, it is lighter weight. Uh, it is generally a little bit stronger, but it does cost more. So again, this is the better chassis, I think, for the Whitehawk, where it's a little more weight sensitive and a little less price sensitive than the J-Flight. And that is really going to be the common theme of difference between them. J-Flight doesn't care so much about weight, they focus more a little bit on the price, although a full J flight is, is in the upper ranges of its price point for sure. Whereas a White Hawk, it's worried a little bit more about weight and a little bit less about price. They're willing to do some jazzy pants things. Now in terms of safety systems, there is a slight nod toward the camp of a White Hawk. And the reason being, um, they both ride on Goodyear Endurance radials, rated for 87 miles per hour. They both are, of course, have smoke detectors, CO detectors, that stuff has to be there. That's not even a question. They're both going to have a spare tire. Also the Goodyear, they don't use a, a cheaper spare tire. Um, they will both have J Smart lighting, and that is really where you're going to see the difference. They both have the J Smart light system, which causes like all of the side marker lights on that J flight over there. Like if you flip on your, your right hand turn signal, all the lights on that side are going to flash. It gives everybody an idea what you're doing. Now, White Hawk does that too, and they both have reverse travel lighting, but White Hawk does one little thing further. White Hawk also includes side view camera prep. Now, to try to proactively address a question, J Smart Lighting will cause this thing to blink. A lot of people are thinking, yeah, but isn't that, if I install a camera over here, isn't that gonna cut the power in and out of the camera? Aren't I going to lose the feed? The answer is no. Thankfully, the people at Jayco, um, you know, smart people thought of that. They've got over 50 years of experience. I think Coachman's the only brand that, uh, the only other brand I've seen around there that can even uh, match that, uh, exceed it slightly. But they said, we need two wires. We need one wire to power the light. We need one wire to power the camera. So the light can blink all at once. It's not gonna cause the camera to clip in and out. But none of this matters if you're not actually going to install uh, side view cameras, which is not going to be a standard piece of equipment. Now, both brands are going to give us the option of including these really nice Moride stable steps. However, um, if you don't apply those to a J flight, you're going to get a set of those traditional kind of fold out black steel kind of steps. Nothing wrong with them. But on a White Hawk, what you'll see instead are these nice aluminum plank kind of anti slip entry steps. Now, in the case of both brands, like this is a good example right here. If there are two entry doors, your main entry door, that's where your stable step is going to go. A secondary entry door will still be the uh, kind of fold out steps because it doesn't tend to get as much use. But it is still cool that even on a White Hawk, it's still getting a treatment of some variety. Now, as I mentioned, they're both going to ride on Goodyear Endurance radials. They both have the same speed ratings and all that. But notice the gap or lack thereof between the tires on a J flight. Whereas a White Hawk has this really exaggerated wide stance stability system. Now, they're both leaf spring systems. They're both Goodyear tires, Dexter axles. They're the same hardware, it's just that the tires are spread out a little bit here. And what that's going to do is it, it does a phenomenal job of taking the bounce, the porpoising, and the wiggle jiggle uh, sway out of your towing experience. This is not a replacement for weight distributing anti-sway system. You still need one of those regardless. This is a supplement to that. And again, it's kind of one of the differences between the products. If you're gonna be uh, casually camping, not towing as much, a little extra money on the suspension system, a little less weight in the structure, not a big deal for you. A J flight would be a good fit. If you plan to tow and go a lot, you're gonna be using this thing a lot. You want a smoother towing experience. 
Well, you can justify the extra budget in a Whitehawk and get that uh, nicer, smoother towing experience. Now, this is true not just of Whitehawk. There's a, a lot of brands that use these wide stance axle systems, and I hear just the RV delivery drivers who bring these things to us, you know, they drive like a uh, three quarter and one ton truck, some of them dualies, and they will still comment how a trailer with the wide axles, they go, man, that thing just, it just tows smooth as butter, you know? They work well. Now, on a J flight, if you just walk up and flip the door, it's gonna slam shut. Now, obviously I didn't do that hard there because I'm not trying to break anything, but if the kids flip it, the wind gets a hold of it, it's gonna slam, open or close, gonna go wham. By comparison, we grab a Whitehawk door and flip it. Notice it doesn't slam against the side of the trailer. I mean, you can you can grab this thing. You can do it all Miss Piggy kind of... <laughs> or don't. And it's not going to go anywhere. So again, the idea there is if you do have kids, yeah, it's a windy day. It's just one less thing to go banging, clanging around. Now, on a full J flight, they have a very traditional baggage door setup. You got the little key lock. Now, both White Hawks and J flights are both key to like. So, you only need one key to get through the whole thing. You don't need like six different keys. And the key that opens this door doesn't open, like, not everybody has it, which is a nice thing. But they have a normal kind of twist lock and a plastic hold back kind of little clip back here. It's not as one hand friendly. By contrast, White Hawks have this handy slam latch and magnet hold back. So, they're going to be a lot more kind of one hand friendly here, especially when you're, you know, being a goofball recording things. Now here's the funny thing. Once we get inside, they're almost identical. They have the same woodwork. They have the same furniture. They have the same uh, like size appliances, like the refrigerator. Once we get past the shell construction, you start to realize that a White Hawk and a J flight they're a lot more similar than they're not. I think one of the best ways that you could talk about a White Hawk is tend to call it like a J-Flight Ultralight. It would actually make a lot of sense because the guts of the trailer are exactly the same. Their, uh, you know, their, their dinette treatments are going to be similar. Now, a J-Flight does have that uh, portable kind of, you know, elliptical base table. You'll see a little variance there in the White Hawk. But the, you know, your hide bed your sofas, your entertainment equipment, things like that, they're they're gonna be basically the same once you get inside of here. They both have uh, pretty much the same decors even, like they both have access to the modern farmhouse decor behind us we're looking at. Uh, both of them standard have an eight cubic foot two-way gas electric refrigerator, and you can upgrade to the uh, 10.7 cubic foot 12 volt compressor fridge like we're seeing right here. They're, they're pretty close in a lot of ways. But the differences do exist. Now, a lot of them are more aesthetic in nature, but there's definitely going to be some functional variances between them. Like if we look up here, one of the things you'll notice is that like White Hawks will have that big sort of like Max Air style big vent fan. Uh, it varies by location on the floor plan. We happen to be the bunkhouse right now. The J flight we're looking at happened to be a rear kitchen because we're not comparing floor plans. We're comparing lines, each brand of trailer today. But you notice, you know, the, you still got your dinette end doors. Now your dinette table thing is a little bit different over here. Uh, you're picking up a couple little accent lights. Both of them uh, will have options for like theater seating, but in a White Hawk, you get these really cool kind of pivot swinging table stands. They actually slot into the cup holder, that heat massage recliner, when you go with the theater seat option, which is pretty cool. Now, J Flight and White Hawk both will have options for things like fireplaces. TVs, though, your entertainment, your TVs will be standard in a White Hawk, whereas they tend to be optional in a J Flight. Not tend to be, they are optional in a J Flight. They'll have the same entertainment unit, and you might notice they have a different refrigerator, but they're both effectively the same thing, the same capacity. Um, there are also some little variances, like when you're in a uh, J Flight, your kitchen countertops will be the same sealed edge thermal foil that you're seeing right here. But in a White Hawk, you will also find that on the dining table, in the bathroom, everywhere. Another cool thing on the White Hawk is if you look at that table really closely, it has a real simulated live edge. It's got some kind of oddball little cuts and jumps to it. It's just there for visual aesthetics. That's really its only purpose in that regard. They're both going to have sink covers. You know, they're both, uh, they're very similar that way. Um, one of the other major differences here, there, there's two other significant differences that you can see in the living room. The first is the ceiling. 
I don't know how well it's translating to camera looking at this, but a White Hawk I mentioned with the Raptors has a vaulted ceiling. It's six and a half foot to the sidewall, and then it has that really exaggerated vault to make this thing look and feel huge. I'm not using a fisheye lens. It just, it does open right up like that. Whereas a J-Flight is 6'9 tall. It's got a three inch salt, taller sidewall, but it's a linear ceiling. So there's some benefits both ways. And interestingly, in this regard, I actually give the nod to J-Flight. Well, I give the nod to White Hawk for fashion and I give the nod to J-Flight for function. And here's why I say that. When the walls are taller, that means our cabinetry can be bigger. That means that we have a bigger, more open sense of the RV through the entire thing, not just in the middle. And I'll tell you where that's really important is when you're taller like me and you're hanging out in the shower, I don't have to have my head in the bubble of a J-Flight because that taller ceiling, like plumbing code in travel trailer RVs requires there to be a certain gap between some kind of things. And that means there, in a travel trailer, always needs to be a little bit of a step up into the shower. Well, the taller sidewall means that I can have my head all the way back here and I never have to worry about it, which is something I really appreciate. And if you're bigger than me, you still have the skylight if you really need to stick your head up there. But the thing is, the White Hawk RV designer, he doesn't suck. <laughs> he's, he's very good. And he does a very interesting thing on a lot of his White Hawks. So that's the side of the White Hawk. I feel like, uh, you remember that show Tool Time with the neighbor peeking over the fence? He puts his showers most of the time on the inside wall, not against the exterior sidewall of the RV, which is what that is. And what that means is that my head can be over here in the very tallest part of the vault, where once again, I don't need uh, the skylight basically to for, for headroom. So they, they both do it well, they just do it differently. And isn't that just really the story of the day between these two? White Hawk also standard has something that's optional on J flights, and that's the uh, the J command system, the BM Pro command center. So it lets you do things like it's your normal system monitor. Like if you want to check your tanks, your battery, you want to operate your slides and awnings, you can do all that right here. They do include you though some handy switches for the general things like living room lights, stuff that you're going to use every day with high frequency, so you don't have to come over here and beep boop beep boop beep boop. Beep, beep. <laughs> but um, I feel like R two D two for a second there. But um, what I was getting at is you can option that onto a J flight, but it's just standard here in a White Hawk, which is nice. And anything you can do off that panel, you can sync to your phone and just as easily do off your phone. And finally, because I think after this, we pretty much got it licked, at least to any major degree, the bedroom. We're in a J flight. They will both have a 60 by 80 queen bed. They will handle their king bed upgrade a little bit differently. J Flight always has a little bit smaller side stands, um, your, your hanging spaces right there, that will always be a little bit smaller. Now the shape of the J Flight does allow them uh, a, a little more obvious kind of gap for their overhead storage space, especially with that taller ceiling. So when you add a king bed into a J Flight, you won't see a lot of variance. And once again, I am really looking for input on this. This is a new feature. Do you stick with the factory queen, which, uh, you know, especially in the J flight segment, there's nobody else in this segment really of any significance that offers even a true queen, let alone a king upgrade. Do you go with the king bed? I think it's easy in a J flight since a lot of people tend to swap out a mattress anyway. I think stick with the queen. And if you're a king person, you can just swap a king in here anytime. Um, they both have easy lift under bed storage. They accomplish it a little bit differently. J Flight has these kind of open pockets in the front, but the bed does lift for easy storage. And it's really the way that they handle the bedside nightstands that you'll see uh, another significant variance between the two. Now the White Hawk, by contrast, with that big front windshield, obviously it has that big window that opens the bedroom right up. One of the things they did here though is that it does have a roll down blackout privacy shade. And on the outside of it, the sun side, there is a radiant barrier layer on that. It's a, it's a thing that you really can't see. And it's a thing that White Hawk is doing that most brands are not, although Wildwood's doing a good job of it on their big panoramic windows and their super slides. But it gives it a different look for sure. They both again have the 60 by 80 queen beds. And you can see that when you stick with the standard bed in a White Hawk, 
uh, you, you've got your normal side stands. Now remember that in the Jayco family, they go another step beyond into the Eagle HT series where King Bed is also available. I, and I think that makes a logical sense. Jay Feathers have a Camp Queen, White Hawks have a True Queen, and Eagle HTs, uh, you, you know, you can outfit with a King. So you have like a one, two, three step combo there. It makes a lot of sense to me. But if you're noticing these side stands, there's a couple variances here. The uh, bedside table things. It's more that sealed edge thermal foil stuff with that kind of live edge cut to it. Household USB-X uh, outlets on both sides. Not Both J Flight and Whitehawk have household outlets on both sides. Whitehawk also gives us USBs on both sides. But you see that extra little switch right there? Well, if I you allow me to <clears throat> climb in bed with you around the corner here, you see there's this open pocket. Well, there's that, that little switch activated the blue lamp back there. Just kind of little spot lamps are seen in that corner. There's also a household outlet back there so that if you want to, you could use that as something like a CPAP corner or station. Uh, one other interesting thing on the Whitehawks is what they're doing here. They've got a one, two, three light system. Tap once for just kind of night light. Tap a second time for reading. Tap a third time to go blind. Um, which is different from going bald, which, you know, I am also doing. Well, one more major difference between the two that I think is going to be kind of a game changer for a lot of people is for 2021, all Jayco laminated products are now carpetless in their slide systems. That is a very nice upgrade that I think a lot of people are going to like. And if you notice, they use the exact same flooring material in the slide floor that they're using on the main deck. So it gives it a larger, open, more clean and seamless and easier to clean kind of thing. Um, now that does, no, that's not the last difference. I I just realized I forgot one of the other major ones. Heating and cooling. White Hawk does not use floor heat vents in your main traffic areas. You might find one here and there sparingly, but it is very uncommon. Where J-Flight always has uh, vents through the flooring. Now, the thing is, j -Flight has, I think, a best-in-class optional thermal package. When you apply that there, it adds, uh, you know, enclosed underbelly, heating, insulation. There's a radiant barrier through the slide floor. Extra insulation, I believe, in the roof. I mean, it does a lot of things. Interestingly, the White Hawk kind of heating climate package is not all that dissimilar. But at the end of the 2020 model year, Jayco cold chambered, tested, and proved White Hawks to have the exact same zero degree capability as something like an Eagle, North Point, Pinnacle. White Hawk is very uncommon that it is a laminated travel trailer, proven zero degree functional, at least zero to 100, if not better. Cougar's another one of those that we carry here at Halid RV. They were really the first ones to prove that. And White Hawk went, well, I think we could pass, and they tested, and there you go. Now, the thing is, I think J Flights might be capable of passing the same testing but they've never been tested. So I can't make that promise for you. So if you're looking for that guarantee assurance and peace of mind, White Hawk does technically have a better seasonal package. So White Hawk, J Flight, which one's the better fit for you? Well, I think it really depends on the specific goals, wants and needs that you're looking to accomplish. I don't believe either product is superior to the other. If I did, then we wouldn't carry both of them here at Halid RV. I think they're both really awesome. I think that they both do different things very well. I think that they both do the things that matter very well. So it boils down to a little bit of preference and user intention. And if you appreciate all this, please give our team here at Halid RV the fair opportunity to work with you in exchange for our efforts here today. We don't do hidden dealer fees, but we do everything else. Hit that subscribe button. We'll try to keep these comparisons coming. Let us know if we missed something. Let us know what I could do to do this job better for you. I'm really really trying to go above and beyond and do some things here that you just can't find anywhere else on the internet. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone.